Hey guys, Ivan here and in today's video we got some very interesting bodybuilding updates as you can see we are starting with a physique update of Nick Walker who is about 14 weeks out of New York Pro and this is what his legs are looking like right now we got some other photos as well but first let's check this one out so his legs are definitely looking better whatever he's doing they are definitely growing and that is the muscle that is kind of growing the slowest for nick but it is progressing especially lately especially after he lost the Arnold classic supposedly because of his legs because of his leg fullness his legs weren't really the size of samson's and basically the judges told him he was too flat in the legs and that's why he lost sure he died down pretty hard and he lost some fullness too but still if his legs were really good they wouldn't lose the fullness so he really focused on bringing them up and i think he did a good job with that so i believe the difference between the last show he did arnold classic and the upcoming new york pro i believe the difference is gonna be big it's gonna be a big difference for sure as you can see right here in this photo his legs are really like full and round and i think this is after a leg workout so yeah he has a pump but still still i think his legs definitely made progress and if you take a look at his upper body it's really difficult to have massive wide legs if you are so freaking big and massive and wide in your upper body in your shoulders he has so much thickness and width in his upper body it's insane and when that is the case it's really difficult to have legs big enough wide enough in comparison to the upper body size and width for example, maybe you saw this uh, on the Instagram, basically what Phil Heath would look like if his clavicles were wider. If that was the case, his legs would have to be so much bigger. He got away with uh, smaller legs because his waist size structurally was smaller, he wasn't very wide in the hips, and also his shoulders were narrow, so his legs were popping out just enough, even though those legs were not exactly the biggest legs ever, but they looked proportionate, they were good enough because his shoulders were narrow. And as you can see, if his shoulders were wider, his legs would look so much smaller, which is the case with Nick Walker. He's really wide in the shoulders, really thick and massive in the upper body. Also, he doesn't have the smallest waist and his legs are shorter than his torso. So he has all of the trouble, as you can imagine, to make his legs look big. But he actually grew them a lot. You know, the guy is very, very persistent, really devoted, really focused. And when he decides to make an improvement, he does that. And so he grew his legs up to a point where I don't see a big imbalance anymore. And I think this is going to translate to the stage as well. Actually, there are 14 more weeks for him to make even more progress, which I believe will happen because his conditioning right now is already very good. So he doesn't need to get leaner, that much leaner. He can still grow into the show and maybe get like shredded in the final four five six weeks so i think he will make even more progress and his legs are gonna be really big actually we actually also got a full physique update and this is only a thumbnail of his youtube video he didn't post anything like this on his instagram or his youtube so the quality of the photo is not exactly the best but you can get a pretty good idea where he's at right now in terms of body fat like i said he is very very lean like I said, he doesn't really need to work on conditioning that much in this prep. He can just, you know, grow, progress, and then in the end get a little bit leaner and drier. And that's about it. Like, his conditioning is very, very good. And damn, he looks massive. He looks really freaking massive. Legs, once again, his problem area, it's definitely better. But as you can see, not the best body part for Nick. Not only proportionally speaking, but also his legs are just shaped that way i mean he doesn't have the biggest outer sweep however he is doing his best and he's making progress and if we are talking about the upcoming new york pro i think he is winning that one pretty easily like in my opinion he could have won the mr olympia if he competed if he didn't injure himself so new york pro really should be a cakewalk and i don't think there's gonna be a lot of heavy hitters because all those guys know that nick is doing it why would they show up to be second you know so like I said, progress is definitely being made, 13 and a half weeks out of New York Pro, this is what Nick Walker's legs look like, we already know that his upper body is gonna be insane, we're focused on his legs, how good will they be, how much can he improve them, how much will the injury affect him, 
I think it's not gonna be a problem, I think he's gonna be really good in the lag department at the New York Pro and then later at the Mr. Olympia as well, where he potentially might even win the whole thing. Do you guys believe that's possible? Whatever you think guys, tell me down below and tell me what you think about Nick's lags. Is he making progress? It's a good thing that I showed you Carlos Thomas Jr. and his legs after I showed you what Nick Walker looks like, because if I showed you this first and then we looked at Nick Walker, you would think you know, Nick is definitely lagging in that area quite a bit behind. Because this guy, Carlos Thomas Jr., I don't know what the hell is this guy doing to his legs, but damn, this is looking insane. This is looking... His legs are literally forming circles. I mean, sure, you could say Nixilla has bigger legs because he's a bigger man, but like, are Nixilla's legs forming circles like this? I mean, this much? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, this guy is, for his height, he is seriously freaking around and massive. Like, he is a legit freak. But on stage, it's not looking that impressive. Here's what he looked like at the Texas Pro last year against Andrew Jack and Hunter Labrada, where he took third spot. So, he's a short guy, like a really short guy. So, he definitely doesn't have the wow factor as he does when he takes those photos alone, because he's not really that big. He is big for his height, for his proportions, but when he stands next to the guys like Andrew Jack or Hunter Labrada, he kind of gets dwarfed a little bit. Now, also, it's the problem with conditioning. I mean, Hari Japan is short, Derek Lansford is very short. These guys never had an issue with that. But they're coming in in good condition. Carlos Thomas never brought good condition, not even at this Texas Pro. So maybe if he brings conditioning at some point, he's gonna look... I mean, he's definitely going to look much more impressive. Because even though he's not the biggest man, he still does pack a ton of muscle on his frame. And here his legs maybe don't look that big, but like Andrew Jack has pretty big legs. And here, next to Carlos, his legs don't look that big. So I believe the background is making all of these guys' legs smaller for some reason. And in comparison, you can see how big Carlos' legs are. But I'm pretty sure they have definitely gotten much bigger because this is mind-boggling right here. Yeah, of course, it's the off-season, he's bloated and all that, like he's full of carbs, glycogen, water, whatever. So he's really full and big in the off-season. When it comes to contest time, he gets smaller, but not that much smaller because he's already in a good condition right here. Pretty good for the off-season, right? I don't know what the rest of his physique looks like, but I know his legs are freaking insane right now. Wow, <laughs> what the hell is going on right here? The next physique update is Horse MD, Marcelo D'Angelis. And damn, is his back looking impressive in this photo, in this back last spread. This is looking ridiculous, man. What the hell? What the hell, seriously? So this is looking like a proper cobra back. You can see, you can literally see the eyes of a cobra. I mean, it's crazy how wide his lats are, how much of a V-taper this actually is. And you know what the funniest thing is? This guy is actually criticized for a week back. They're calling him out for having a small back, an undeveloped back. Can you believe that? Does that make any sense? Well, actually it does, because in the back double bicep, the situation is definitely not this good. At least it wasn't the last time he competed. I think he improved the back. I think it's definitely much better now. His back lat spread was good. It was already good at Romania Pro, for example, but it wasn't this good. It wasn't this good. It wasn't this thick. It didn't have this much density. In the caption of this post, he says eight poses, only two back. Only two poses are from the back. And why is he saying this? Well, yeah, everybody is criticizing him for it, but... John De La Rosa recently called out Horse MD, you know, by name. He said some of these guys don't have a back. For example, Horse MD. He literally said that he's gonna beat Horse MD because he actually has a much better back than him. So I believe this, this caption here is referring to what John had to say. And I think Horse MD actually made a really good point. Yes, there are eight poses and only two are from the back. And Horse MD is winning this one. 
He's definitely winning this one, probably against pretty much everybody in that show. I can see him winning against Samson Dauda, maybe even against Hari Chopin, but I think he's gonna be either first or second back last spread in that show, because he's phenomenal in this pose, and you know guys, if you have really good lats, if you have really good lower lats, a lot of lat thickness, you're gonna look good in the back double bicep, but if you have a really good upper back thickness, like traps, rhomboids, and like upper lats, you're gonna look really good in the back lat spread, and I don't think Samson or Hadi have this kind of upper backs. I don't think they have this much detail in their upper backs, they don't get this wide in the shoulders, so yeah, I mean, Horse MD is only gonna be beaten by so many guys in the back double bicep, but I believe his back double bicep is gonna look better. I'm pretty sure he improved this pose, so I'm pretty sure also that he improved the back double bicep, it's still probably gonna be, it's definitely going to be his weakest pose, but maybe with some tweaks in posing, with a little bit more improvement, it's gonna look decent. Anyways, down below in the comment section guys, tell me what do you think about his back, and where do you have Horse MD in the upcoming Arnold Classic, guys, guys, looking at this, I would not be surprised if he cracked that top 3, right now I don't see him anywhere out of that top 4, I don't see James Hollingshead beating this guy, no, but Rafael Brandau, I'm not so sure, I'm really not sure, because here is what Rafael Brandau looks like right now, in a recent podcast with Dennis James, and he was asked how much bigger he is right now, this year, and they filmed the podcast at 18 weeks out of Arnold Classic, and he said that at that point, compared to last time he competed, he's actually 15 pounds heavier. Now, I don't think he added 15 pounds of muscle, because I believe he was more shredded the last time he competed at 18 days out, and so how much? How much did he actually gain? 10 pounds? 5 pounds? I would go with like 10 pounds, I believe he actually did gain around 10 pounds of muscle, which is insane which is insane, because I'm looking at this photo and looking at the conditioning, and I don't think he was that much leaner the last time, so, like, probably around 10 pounds, maybe, let's say, 7-8 pounds, which is an amazing gain for somebody on that level, I mean, this guy is a top 10 Olympian already, he competed at, like, 250-something, 255, so this time around, it's gonna be, like, 265 or 270, like, that's heavy, right, that's really heavy, and in 2021, he was actually beating Samson, and Samson was already, at that point, like 20 or 30 pounds heavier than Rafa. Of course, in the meantime, uh, Samson grew like another 30 pounds of muscle, and Rafael grew only like 10, but with his proportions, and I'm not even saying he can beat Samson or Hadi, that's, I believe that's, that's out of question, but he can, you know, be in that top 3, that would be a huge success for him, against these guys in this lineup, top 3 at the Arnold Classic would be amazing. And I mean, looking at his physique updates, I don't really see something insane, something crazy, something new, I'm more impressed with the Horse MD, but I'm basing my prediction based on his previous results, like he was really up there, like he was up high in ranking, and now he's bigger, hopefully conditioning is gonna be the same, so yeah, like uh, in all likeliness he's gonna be, third, but maybe he's gonna lose against Horse MD, that's a, that's a new rivalry that I'm really curious about, because both guys are Brazilians, and Horse MD is like the new upcoming guy, if he beats Rafael Brandau, that would make a hell of a story, but I don't know if that's gonna happen, whatever you guys think, tell me down below, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and for more videos like this, please, just subscribe to this channel guys, thank you so much, all the best, bye bye.